Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. The sun is rising over our nation's capital, and I can't think of a better way to start the day than in the Word of God. Today, John chapter 10, the good shepherd and the abundant life. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. What we have here in chapter 10 is a continuation of the discourse that we were reading in chapter 9, and it ends with the Jewish leadership wanting to stone Jesus. Now, one aspect that John makes abundantly clear is that the political and religious powers wanted to eliminate Jesus. They hated him. In fact, look at verse 31 here. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. I don't miss what I'm about to say. In America, over the last several decades, our culture, with the aid of some in the church, have created an idol of sorts. Now, stick with me. The name of this idol is Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about the biblical Jesus we've been reading about. I'm talking about one that they've created in their own image, a Jesus that is totally removed from Scripture and from history. I mean, how many times have we heard, well, Jesus, he's just love, and everybody loved him, and he loved everyone. Well, if everyone loved him, why were they always trying to kill him? The truth is, there were those who loved him. There were. They were the ones who heard him and responded to him in obedience. But the others, as we've read throughout the book of John and elsewhere, rejected him because they preferred darkness over light. Jesus, Jesus, I mean, if there's one thing that should be clear to us as we've been on this journey through the scripture, especially here in the New Testament, Jesus was a controversial figure. He brought non-negotiable truth to the world. People didn't like that 2,000 years ago, and guess what? There are a lot of folks that don't like it today. But this truth, that Jesus is the door, not just to surviving in this world, but thriving, is the truth. Jesus came not to just save us from the penalty of death that we're under because of sin, but he came to give us meaningful, soul-satisfying life. But here's the key, and and when we read this in John chapter 10, we must walk through that door, the door of Jesus, to experience that soul-satisfying life that we would call abundant life. Before we take a uh, deeper look at Jesus' discussion of the Good Shepherd in the first half of this chapter, let me give you a quick overview of the entire chapter. Now, Between verses 21 and 22, there's a two-month interval. The Feast of the Tabernacles was in October, which was the focus of what we've been reading, going back to chapter 7, verse 2, all the way to verse 21 of chapter 10. Then in verse 22, we pick up the Feast of Dedication, uh, which happens in December. It was instituted in uh, 165 B.C. by Judas Uh, Maccabeus in commemorating the cleansing and reopening of the temple after it was uh, desecrated by Antiochus Epiphanes in 168 BC. This is also known as the the Feast of Lights or uh, Hanukkah. Now, the religious crowd sought to stone him once again, and then in the latter part of this chapter, the last few verses, he left and went beyond the Jordan for about two months in an area that was uh, governed by Herod and was beyond the reach of the Jewish authorities from Jerusalem. So let's begin in verse 1 of chapter 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. All right, so, so why sheep? Why this illustration of sheep? Well, for us today, living in mostly a non-agrarian society, we miss the fullness of these animal illustrations. You know, we happen to have some animals and have had animals. Never had sheep, but it's very instructive when you actually watch the behavior of animals. Martin Luther wrote this. He said, the simple creature, the sheep, has this special note among all animals, that it quickly hears the voice of the shepherd, follows no one else, depends entirely on him, and seeks help from him alone. It cannot help itself, but is shut up to the aid of others. So a, a sheep hears the voice of the shepherd and is totally dependent upon that shepherd. Verse nine, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now the shepherd at night would actually sleep at the opening of the, the pen or the corral where they would keep the sheep. And so you had to go through the shepherd to get in and out or get to the sheep. And so he was their protector. The sheep, the, the, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Now let me repeat what I said earlier. Jesus didn't come to this earth just to save us from the sentence of death that we were under. That's great, but that wasn't the sum total of it. He came to bring us life. You know, you often hear, well, what are you, you're, you're against this, but what are you for? Jesus didn't come just because he was against death. He came because he was for life. He came to bring life to us, but not just any life. His purpose was for us not to just f finish the, uh, to get across the finish line as survivors. He came to enable us to thrive, to experience the abundant life. He said, I came to, to bring life that they may have it more abundantly. Now, this does not necessarily mean material life. Abundant life is not a synonym for fame and fortune. It means a fulfilling satisfying life, a soul-satisfying life, meaning a contentment that the world is searching for but never finding. It is what Jesus pointed to in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when he said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all of these things. What things? The things that the world is spending their time seeking. He said, all these things will be added to you. Now, that, that means when we place the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ, first in our lives. Everything else falls into its proper place. And then we have what people are desperately searching for. We have purpose, we have meaning, and we have contentment. That's the abundant life. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And... Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and they will be one flock and one shepherd. A couple important notes here. If we know the voice of Jesus as the shepherd, we are not going to be taken in by deceivers. So that's critical. And, and that's why we've got to be in the Word of God. We've got to know the voice of the shepherd. And that way, as Jesus warned repeatedly, do not be deceived. If we know the voice of the shepherd, we will not be deceived by an impersonator. And then a, another point here where he says, and I have other sheep I have which are not of this fold. He's there speaking of the fact that the Gentiles were going to be grafted in a, a different flock, and they're going to be one flock, one shepherd there would be a, a unifying element of the Gentiles and the Jews through Jesus, the door. Therefore, verse 17, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. 
No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up. This command I have received from my Father. Jesus wasn't killed. Jesus laid down his life. He sacrificed his life for us. Now, let me just uh, very quickly summarize here. Jesus describes the qualities or the characteristics of the good shepherd. And I think this is important to note. There's really four aspects that Jesus talks about here. He talks about, number one, that the good shepherd secures the well-being of his sheep. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. That's what the good shepherd is about. He is about the sheep. And that's what Jesus has been about. Number two is he stands in the gap, a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. You see, a, a hireling doesn't really care. He's about the wages. But a good shepherd stands in the gap for the sheep. Number three, he speaks to the sheep. Verse 26 but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. That's important to know. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. This is where we're secure. When we belong to Jesus, we're secure in his hand. does not mean that we're not going to have challenges and difficulties, but it means that our, our eternal destination is secure. And it also means that, look, Jesus' words are true. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Again, it does not make us immune from the difficulties and challenges of this life, but it means that those things begin to have purpose and meaning. And we begin to see the bigger picture as we follow the Lord and we hear his voice and listen to his word. That's why this journey through the word of God is so important. The Lord speaks to us through his word. Fourth, finally, he sacrifices for his sheep. The good shepherd, as I said, gives his life for his sheep. He lays down his life. It wasn't taken from him. He laid it down. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he is a model for the under shepherds, the pastors. And I would take that even a step further. He is an example. I want to speak to the men for just a moment, fathers and husbands. We should be the shepherds of our families. Now that may, you know, some may take issue with that. It's the word. Recall what Paul wrote in Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter five, verse 25, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. See, Jesus is our model. He's the model for pastors. He's the model, I believe, for, for, for fathers. And unfortunately, we, we've, we see a lot missing the mark today. So I would challenge you, fathers, to be the good shepherds of your home, to shepherd your children, uh, and to, to care for, nurture, and give of yourself uh, to your wife just as Christ laid down his life for us. What a great chapter. And I encourage you to continue reading the rest, uh, the second half of this chapter. And um, again, if you're not doing this, we've got a new uh, resource coming up for our next journey, uh, a, a journal, so that you can take these notes. I hope you're doing that. And uh, it, just, it just, I find that taking these notes allows uh, these things to you to meditate upon these truths and and again a good commentary is always helpful as well to to go a little deeper in those things that the holy spirit is prompting you to look at as you move through this journey this two-year journey through the word of god let's pray father thank you for your word what a what an amazing chapter that you came and i just pray that this would uh just grab our hearts this morning. That you came, not that we would just have life, but we would have it more abundantly. And, and I, I just pray, Lord, that those that are searching and, and seeking and looking in all the wrong places this morning would find that satisfaction, that soul-satisfying life in you. Thank you, Father. And we pray, continue to pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us and rightfully applying this word to our lives in this world in which we live.
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining me this morning, and until next time, keep standing on the Word.